Un alma saludable es indispensable para que un líder sea eficaz y dé prioridad a aquello que Dios le pide que haga, que es cumplir su misión en el mundo. Sin embargo, uno de los desafíos más grandes cuando se alcanza la salud es poder ir al siguiente paso y es cumplir la misión para la cual hemos sido establecidos, que es ir y establecer a otros a través del discipulado y el compartir las buenas nuevas mediante plantaciones de iglesias. Hemos estado trabajando por un periodo ya importante de tiempo con el doctor Glenn Wagner, presidente de Future Lead y otros aliados estratégicos para desarrollar estos procesos y poder alcanzar lo que llamamos el tercer nivel de coaching que tiene que ver con el desarrollo de una iglesia reproductiva, una iglesia que pueda plantar nuevas obras en Latinoamérica para alcanzar a los perdidos. Y es justamente donde interviene el Dr. Wagner y la alianza que tenemos en curso. Glenn, hemos estado hablando durante esos días de salud espiritual y la necesidad de que los pastores sean primero saludables emocionalmente y espiritualmente para que sean los líderes eficaces que la iglesia necesita en Latinoamérica. Pero una vez que esto es completado, ¿Cuál es el siguiente paso? Plantación de iglesias. Uh, we focused on both the, the personal, spiritual and emotional health of the leader and not only uh, them personally, but then giving them the tools to uh, coach others in that and then focused on restructuring their paradigms of what leadership looks like uh, in the church and uh, in one's personal life to change to a healthy paradigm at the same time rather than one that deteriorates and becomes somewhat manipulative in its model. Well, I, I believe that once we cre have created the model and the paradigm for a healthy life, for healthy leadership, then we can actually aggressively move forward in planting healthy, growing, and reproducing churches. If, if we're living in an unhealthy spiritual paradigm, We're only going to plant churches that uh, recreate what we've already created with high dropout rate among pastors and church planters and the inability of many churches to continue to reach people for Christ and to grow them up in Christ. So uh, our goal now of, of developing over this process of time this network of healthy pastors and ministry coaches, church leaders, now gives us the foundation to plant a healthy, growing, and thriving churches. Esto supone un cambio en nuestra relación, porque hasta ahora nos hemos movido al desarrollo de liderazgo. Pero ahora nos vamos a mover a un camino nuevo en el cual ya has transcurrido y es el ámbito de la plantación de iglesias. ¿Cómo Future Lead y Liderazgo e Innovación pueden unir fuerzas y esfuerzo para hacer posible módulos y equipamiento en el mediano plazo para que pastores sean reproductores de iglesias? Well, I think we can make a difference, and you're right, there are many uh, groups and models and things out there. But I believe what we're able to do through the network that has been developed uh, by you and others is to uh, keep a very simple and clear paradigm. We often make things so complex that the gospel and expansion and true spiritual formation and transformation gets, uh, gets overlooked in the process. So I think we can be one of many. Uh, uh, a growing number of many doing a, a, a more effective job in, in church planting and expansion of the kingdom. I also believe that we have a growing relationships that will enable us to create um, entrepreneurial business enterprises that will be able to sustain these ministries so that monies do not need to be pouring in from elsewhere, but uh, from within each country. Uh, we can sustain the church planting, we can keep it healthy. Um, those pastors that are in need of additional training, additional help, even just some time for their own spiritual and emotional well-being, that can be provided because the resources will be there. Hay muchos modelos allá afuera de cómo hacer plantación de iglesias. De hecho, hemos estado expuestos a numerosas formas de concebir la iglesia. El enfoque de muchas de ellas es lanzar en grande, eh, con una meta de mega iglesia. En realidad, hemos visto que el movimiento debería ser más hacia iglesias de mediano tamaño, con pastores bivocacionales, creando oportunidades para financiamiento continuo a esta obra. ¿Bajo qué modelo estaríamos trabajando? Porque existe la propuesta de un modelo keniano o más bien Latinoamérica tiene algo que contribuir al modelo de plantación en el mundo. Well, I, I think that this transition is a healthy one, not so much that um, 
we're moving away from you have to plant large. Uh, I, I think that that does work in certain situations, certain places. But again, we make the, uh, we put the emphasis on the wrong thing. Uh, the right emphasis is to plant healthy, uh, to plant a spiritually strong uh, group of believers with a spiritually strong, emotionally stable and, and a financial uh, support underneath that uh, economic project. So that there are strengths. So whether you are planting small or planting large, uh, the the sustainability of that, and the aggressiveness with which they can reach people for Christ is more dependent upon the health than it is upon the size. So we have to keep the emphasis on the right things. And if the emphasis is there, then the numerical issues are in God's sovereign hands. The the rest of the issues are in, in our mindset, and as God works in and through each one of those planters. Well, uh, you know, we've been walking together uh, for several years now and establishing that relationship uh, uh, with Future Lead and uh, uh, Literanzo Innovation and what God is doing together. And I actually believe it's the other way around. The things that we are learning here in Latin America are the very things that we will be utilizing in uh, Kenya uh, through Kingdom Partners International and the Park Ministries as well as what Future Lead uh, may contribute to that through materials and things. So, the, but the, the emphasis again is always on the core heart and, and the, the health, the well-being, the stability and strength uh, of the individual pastor and leader. And so as long as we keep that in mind, our collaborative efforts will be utilized and blessed by God. And it'll also keep us focused rather than being pulled in a variety of directions. Uh, this way we can utilize the strengths of each ministry build on that and each ministry does not need to reinvent the wheel and uh, do something that's their own turf rather than others being able to pour into that field and help that to become fertile ground and grow. Gracias Dr. Wagner por lo que nos ha compartido. El Dr. Wagner va a estar trabajando en Latinoamérica permitiéndonos a través de esta alianza llevar conocimientos, preparación y coaching a pastores, así como ir adelantando recursos para sostener nuevas obras que las iglesias afiliadas a las redes de coaching podrán establecer bajo un programa que va a tener una continuidad, una calidad y sobre todo una guía de Dios al cumplir la gran comisión para nuestro continente. Y que Dios les bendiga, les habló Juan Carlos Flores de Liderazgo e Innovación.